Hello and welcome back. Today we will start lecture 5-2 on frequency response design, phase, lag, and lead compensators. The objectives are to describe the benefits of using lead and lag compensation for control system design, to apply lag and lead compensation to improve the characteristics of a control system, such as steady state accuracy, phase, and gain margin, and to describe the benefits of using lag lead compensation for control system design, and then to apply lag lead compensation to improve the characteristics such as steady state accuracy, phase and gain margin of a control system. Note that because this is such an extensive topic, it will cover two lectures. Root locus design reshapes the transient response of a closed loop control system. Frequency response design adjusts the transient response in terms of the stability margins, gain crossover frequency, static error constant, bandwidth, percent overshoot, and time to peak, etc. For frequency response design, it is better to work with the Bode diagram because it is easier to see the effects of changes in the poles and zeros. In frequency response design, the open loop gain is adjusted to meet the steady state accuracy requirements. The Bode diagram is then plotted using that gain and the curves are reshaped with a compensator to meet the phase and gain margins. The low frequency gain below the gain crossover frequency indicates the steady state error of the closed loop system. That's the lag compensator. The medium frequency near the gain crossover frequency indicates the relative stability. That's the lead compensator. The lead compensator improves the transient response to meet the phase margin, per, such as percent overshoot and bandwidth, settling time or peak time requirements. Lead compensation improves the transient response of a control system and yields a small change in steady state error. However, it may also accentuate high frequency noise effects. It improves high frequency performance, speed of response, and stability margins. Figure one shows the Bode diagram for a lead compensator and illustrates that it is a high pass filter with a positive phase angle. The lead compensator can be used to provide sufficient phase lead to offset excessive phase lag. The maximum phase lead is phi sub m and can be found from sine of phi sub m is equal to one minus alpha over one plus alpha. A change in the gain will shift the magnitude characteristics of a control system with no change in the shape of the phase characteristic. So here we have the magnitude and phase plot for a lead compensator. Some things to notice here is that P lead is greater than Z lead. So here we have P lead. Here we have Z lead. And the shape is such that the phase margin is, the phase is a positive angle and that omega sub m right in the center at the maximum frequency is one over the square root of alpha times t or the magnitude is negative 20 log of one over the square root of alpha. So the expression we can use for the lead compensator is gc of s is kc, the gain of the compensator times s plus z lead over s plus p lead or alternately we can write it as s plus 1 over t lead divided by s plus 1 over alpha t lead where t lead is some constant that we have selected based upon where we want the phase angle to be and alpha is between 0 and 1 so for a phase lead compensator remember p lead is always greater than z lead now let's review the steps to design a lead compensator step one Determine the gain K to satisfy the steady state error requirement, or just let K equal one. Step two, plot the Bode diagram of the open loop transfer function using the value of K, gain K found in step one. Step three, determine the uncompensated phase margin PM from the Bode diagram. If the required phase margin is not given, then calculate the damping ratio zeta from the required percent overshoot and then calculate the phase margin by using the arc tangent of 2 zeta over the square root of negative 2 zeta squared plus the square root of 1 plus 4 zeta to the fourth power. 
Step four, determine the compensator's required phase angle such that phi is equal to PM minus the uncompensated phase margin plus five. Five is just a fudge factor or a correction factor because sometimes when you adjust the, comp the control system with the compensator, there's a small change in the phase angle. Next, calculate the attenuation factor alpha equal to one minus sine phi over one plus sine phi. And then calculate the magnitude criterion where the compensator's phase angle maximum is at one over the square root of alpha. You now search the Bode diagram to locate the frequency omega sub maximum where the magnitude is one over m in decibels. And use that frequency to find the lead compensator corner frequencies knowing that T lead is equal to one over the square root of omega m sub m times the square root of alpha. You then set the lead compensator zero, Z lead equal to one over T lead and P lead equal to one over alpha T lead. Finally, we calculate the compensator gain KC equal to one over alpha. We will now do these steps several times in order to determine how to design a lead compensator.